Kaminsky with our first uh, video here for Unit 3. Uh, unit 3 is all about angle relationships and parallel lines. Um, so today we're talking about the pairs of angles and classifying angles. So as always in geometry, there's lots of vocabulary that's going to be being tossed around here. Particularly the vocabulary that you're looking at right now is um, going to be basically what we use for most of the chapter here, or most of the unit. Um, so, um, one vocab word that I sort of just wrote in here is transversal. A transversal is when a line cuts through two or more lines. Um, so I have lines B and C here, and so A, line A, would be considered the transversal, because it's the one that's cutting through the two lines. Um, so we're going to talk about the different types of angles that are produced when I have a figure like this. So you see I have eight different angles labeled, um, and so we're just going to talk about some vocabulary here. Um, interior angles are when I have these two lines that are cut by a transversal, any angles that are between those two lines are considered to be interior. So my interior angles um, could be like angle uh, 3, 4, 5, and 6. <clears throat> So these are all my interior angles. Um, exterior angles are the angles that occur outside. So um, I have these two lines, and it's going to be the angles that are outside of that. So basically the opposite. Uh, angles outside the lines. And so those are going to be angle 1, angle 2, angle 7, and angle 8. <clears throat> Um, same side interiors, or sometimes they're referred to as consecutive interiors. That is when we have interior angles, so that's the key word, so I'm looking at angles four, five, or 3, 4, 5, and 6 here, and it's when two angles are on the same side of the transversal. So notice my transversal is A, and 3 and 5 are on the same side of that transversal, so are 4 and 6. Um, and so that's when we're looking at interior angles on the same side of the line, of the transversal. And so I would say that um, if I asked you to list which ones are consecutive interior, you could say 3 and 5, or you could say uh, 4 and 6. Um, similarly, same side exterior angles uh, kind of the same concept. I have my transversal here, and so now I'm looking for what are the exterior angles that are on the same side of that transversal. And so my exterior angles are 1, 2, 7, 8, and so 1 and 7 are on the same side of the transversal. They're on the left side of the transversal. Um, whoops, wrong one. <clears throat> uh, so again, those are exterior angles on the same side of the line. So that could be 1 and 7. Um, or if you want, you could say 2 and 8. Alternate interior angles. If you think about the word alternate, that means you're switching. You're alternating between two things. Um, alternate interior angles. Again, the word interior is there. Um, so my alternate interiors, looking at these four, are the ones that switch sides of the um, transversal. So if you take a look, 4 is sort of in this set of angles, and 5 is in this set of angles. So you're sort of switching the set of four angles that are produced by the intersecting lines and alternating sides. Um, so again, it's interior angles on the opposite sides of the line. So my example there could be angle 5 and angle 4. I could also say 3 and 6 are alternate interiors. Um, corresponding angles are when angles match the position. So earlier I looked at these two intersecting lines and I said it creates these four angles. And so if the angles are in the same position, so like this is in the top left, and this is also in the top left. So of those four angles, you sort of have top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. If the angles match positions, that is um, when you're going to call those corresponding. So 
So one and five are an example, two and six are an example, three and seven, and four and eight. Those are all different examples of corresponding where they match the position. Um, alternate exterior, again, if you think about the phrase um, alternate, it means you're switching sides, but now we're exterior. So that would be like one and eight, because they're both exterior angles, but they're alternating sides of the transversal. So I'll say angle one, eight. Um, and then just as a reminder, uh, back in unit one, we talked about two types of angles. We talked about vertical angles and linear pairs. So those things are still relevant. You should still know based on these four angles what vertical angles are and what a linear pair is. Um, so as a reminder, vertical angles, you want to look for two intersecting lines. Um, I refer to it as the X. It sort of creates an X. And then it's the two angles that have the same measure. So I could say that angle two is congruent um, to angle three. They would have the same measurement. A linear pair, there's lots of linear pairs going on in this um, type of example. So a linear pair, remember, are two angles that are adjacent and supplementary. They fall on a straight line and they share a side. So I could say five and seven are a linear pair, which means they add up to 180 degrees. So that's all of the vocabulary that kind of goes along with recognizing the types of angles. And so there's some different theorems and postulates that are created. Um, a postulate is something in mathematics that has never been proven, but it's sort of just mathematically accepted. And then a theorem is something that has been mathematically proven. Um, so the corresponding angles postulate states that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then each pair of corresponding angles um, are going to be congruent. And so remember, congruent just means that we don't have the actual measurement, we don't have the number but we can say that they're the same. We say they have the same measurement. Alternate interior angle theorem states that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then each pair of alternate interior angles is also congruent. Um, consecutive interior angle theorem says that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, each pair of consecutive interior angles is supplementary. So remember, supplementary means it adds to 180 degrees. Um, and then the alternate exterior angle theorem states if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then each pair of alternate exterior angle is congruent. So, um, I like to put things in nice condensed formats for you all. The nice thing about this unit is that for the most part, there's essentially two scenarios that are going to happen. When we're given a problem, we're either going to set the two things equal to each other or we're going to add the two things together and set it equal to 180 degrees. And so here is your list of when do I set things equal. You set things equal if they're corresponding alternate interior, alternate exterior, or vertical. With vertical lines, the lines do not need to be parallel in order for this to be true. This stuff, we need to have the parallel lines. If the lines are not parallel, then we can't say that those uh, angle relationships are equal. When do I set it equal to 180? That's if it's same side interiors or same side exteriors. Again, that is if the lines are parallel. And then linear pairs, what we learned in unit one, those add up to 180 and that does not matter if the lines are parallel or not. So how do we use this stuff to solve some problems? Here's an example. So I kind of have a crazy figure going on here. Um, these arrows right here, if you ever see these arrows, what that is indicating is that the lines are parallel. So that's telling me that M is parallel to N, and then these double arrows are indicating that P is parallel to Q. Um, so that's what those arrows mean. So you always want to look for those to make sure the lines are parallel. So this says if 5 is equal to 2x minus 10, 7 is equal to x plus 15, find x. So if we look at angle 5 and angle 7, we sort of ask ourselves, step 1, what is the relationship? So when you're asking yourself what is the relationship, you should be looking back to this list right here. So based on this relationship, these are corresponding angles. This is in the bottom left 
this is in the bottom left. So same position. So what do I do when they're corresponding angles? When they're corresponding, I set them equal to each other. And so for this problem, to solve, we're simply going to set these equal and solve for x. So subtract x from both sides. 2x minus x is x. Add 10 to both sides, and that gives you 25. x equals 25, and I'm done. For the next problem, it says the measure of angle 1 is 9x plus 6. Angle 2 is 10x minus 6, and angle 3 is 5y plus 14. Solve for x and y. So if you notice here, 3 has the y in it. 1 and 2 both have x. So we're going to start by working with 1 and 2. So again, look at our graph. Notice the lines are parallel, so everything's OK to do. Look for what's the relationship. What's the relationship? 1 and 2 are alternate exteriors. What do I do with alternate exteriors? Set them equal. So angle 1 is going to be congruent to angle 2. So here I would set angle 1 congruent to angle 2. And so I can set these equal to each other. And once again, we're just going to solve for x here. So subtract 10 gives me negative x. Subtract 6 gives me negative 12, divide by negative 1, and we get x equals 12. So that's solving for x. So now to solve for y, if you look at where 3 is, one thing I want to point out is I can't do anything with 1 and 3 because there's a gap between them. They don't share any lines. Angle 3 is created by line B and D. Angle 1 is created by line A and C. So I can't ever make a relationship with two angles unless they share a line, that transversal. So I'm going to make my relationship with angle 2 and angle 3 here. Notice the relationship, 2 and 3. This is in the top right. That's in the top right. So that means those two angles are equal. And so I can substitute a 12 in for x here. And when I substitute the 12 in for x, um, that's going to give me 10 times 12 minus 6. So that's 120 uh, minus 6, which is equal to 114. Um, and then I'm going to set 114. So this angle is 114. I'm going to set that equal to angle 3. So sorry, my work's kind of all over the place here. So now we just solve for y. 5y equals 100. Divide both sides by 5, we get y is 20. All right, one last problem we'll look at here. So here's my relationship, line n, line m. Notice the two arrows here indicating the lines are parallel. What's the relationship between 1 and 2? The relationship here is that those are same side interiors. So again, what do I do with same side interiors? Same side interiors, I add and set equal to 180. So I'm going to take angle 1, which is 30, add it to angle 2, which equals 180. And then I'm going to simplify and solve. So subtract 82 from both sides. Whoops, that's an x. Get 98. Divide both sides by 2, you get 49. Notice we're just solving for x. We don't have to substitute back in anywhere. And we are done. So big part of this lesson is making sure that you know this table and that you understand what these relationships are. Um, so you may want to go back and study these to kind of help you out with that. All right, that is it for unit one of, uh, I'm sorry, section one of unit three. I know it and now you know it.